Hi and welcome back to my channel. I thought today what I would do is take you through an everyday makeup look and just chat away to you as I'm getting ready. So before the video started, I've already done my, all my facial stuff, all my skincare routine. So I've done my cleanse, my tone, my moisturise and my first step, as always, with any day that I'm putting makeup on, or any day actually, is just SPF. So this is SPF 50. All the details of all the products that I'm using are going to be listed down below in the description to save me sort of worrying what all the prices are and all the names are, because I do forget what the names are. Apologies now for any light, bright light or any me glancing up at the mirror, but you know, I wish I had a different setup in my house, but you know, you work with what you've got. This is, you know, in my bedroom, trying to do a look and I have tall furniture. My dream would actually be to have like a lovely, um, a desk that I could get ready with a lovely mirror and sit down, but no, it's just the format of my room, but hey ho, I'm not complaining. So we start off with the SPF, always perfect underneath your, you know, your skincare and also, sorry, with your skincare or underneath your makeup because you've got to protect your skin because otherwise, you know, anti-aging, damage, pigmentation. So always protecting your skin, whatever the weather. So what we're going to do with and start with first is our beauty booster. So this is all going to be Tropic makeup today. So Tropic beauty booster. This has got SPF in it as well. So you're getting double whammy. So you can put this on in numerous ways. You can put this on by your fingers. You can put it on by a brush. You can put it on by a sponge. It's very, very light, very quick and absorbent. But this is going to be quite a speedy sort of getting ready. So when you haven't got a lot of time, but you want to, you know, you feel and look your best. Um, so I'm just going to be looking in here and looking at you. So apologies for that. So I'm going to just put a dab it around a little bit, which is probably not my normal routine, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how easy it is just to do with your fingers so you can actually go over your whole eyes i would steer clear of your eyebrows of course because that's going to make it harder to get any color out of those later if you're putting color over it um this is it's, it feels so soft it's almost like a moisturizer it doesn't even feel that you're putting makeup on your skin it's not going to be a high coverage point of view it's a very light sort of sheer foundation so it's not a thick it's so light it's gorgeous um it's a lovely light feel to it and what I'm going to do is just make sure you go down the, the edges of your neck. Um, so this is not for someone who's got you know, um, large blemishes or big coverage at all. You can layer this up and you can obviously put other products with it as well. But it's a great place to start when you want to have your skin shining through. But you can just see a little bit of a glow on my skin. It's just lovely. So I will be wiping my hands. Apologies for that. The same thing I use, actually use baby wipes for is to wipe my hands from makeup. So not great for your face. So that's our first step. And what I even might do is quickly go and buff around my skin. I've just got a, um, a foundation brush here. So if you find that with your hands, you've got sort of finger marks as such, you can just gently, in circular motions, blend in, especially around the corners of your nose. You can go over your eyelids, great start as a base for your eye makeup. Um, and it's, you know, choose a nice light foundation brush. It shouldn't be coarse in any way because you are pressing into your skin. And you can use dabbing motions, you can use circular motions, whatever you feel more comfortable with. And um, again, remember to go down your neck. Step one complete. I love make, doing my makeup, I don't know about you guys, but this is an absolute joy to me. This is my time for me. I absolutely love it. It can take me five minutes, it can take me half an hour. I can really you know, get into it and um, enjoy myself. So the second one is our gorgeous concealer here. Just get my tube. This is shade two that I'm using. It's a lovely sponge head on it. There, you can see. Um, and then what I'm trying to do, I don't want to, because I'm 48, so I don't want to over cake this area here because it then starts to sit in your fine lines and wrinkles. Um, so it's just really lighting up um, the dark corners of your eyes, any under eye shadows, um, and then brightening and lifting here um, and brightening underneath your eyebrow. I tend to do a little bit around the corners of my nose. Um, and, and then covering any blemishes that you'll maybe have or any breakouts or anything like that. So this is very light. Again, it's I'm going to be looking in here, so apologies. So a little dab here, just to the corner. I don't want to do like a big V shape, you know. I'm not of that age where you can get away with that. And I think actually, I don't think that's even that in fashion anymore. You know, makeup is like anything. It goes through trends. But you have to stick with what you like and what works for you. Like with fashion. So... A little bit around my nose and I'm just going to cover one little blemish that I have here as well. We have got um, a concealer which is more like a, um, a cream concealer that you can dab on there as well. 
So I may go to that later. So now what I tend to do is this finger here, my ring finger, best to use, um, you can use, of course, concealer brushes, but I always find the warmth of your hand heats up the actual consistency and the concealer itself and it just blends a lot better. So it's just leave it for a few moments and then you can just gently tap. And then I go underneath my eyebrows. You can go over your eyelids. This is a great primer for your eyelids so that any colour that you do put on doesn't have your actual eyelid colour um, showing through. So you could have um, pigmentation or red spots or a purpley or eye shad, um, eyelid or something. Um, I tend to go up a little bit up in between my brows and then you can just gently tap. This can it be a big area of, you know, of, of ageing that you can see. So you just make sure that you find lines, any broken veins, anything like that. And a little tap over the blemish. And that's it. So I'm just going to wipe my hands again. So that's the concealer done. And now we're in a position. What I will do is I'm going to just quickly give it a bit of a swipe of this. This is actually in a separate packet. You can put all these little products that are in the tins. You can actually put them in our palettes, which is, they are fabulous. Um, and that's the best way of having all your makeup together. And I'll show you those to you in a moment. But this is our soft focus powder. And you just give it a bit of a tap. So this is great. It's like a translucent, suits any skin tone. Absolutely amazing. I could tend to go over my eyelid. So it's just packing it in. And you're just neutralizing that area. So when you put your shadows on, it is ready to go. And it's not any of your own skin coming through, your own skin tone. And again, I just tend to set anywhere that you tend to get oil, which tends to be on the T-zone. Um, if you don't, um, if you have dry cheeks or dry patches, obviously don't over powder those areas. So you just, I tend to do my T-zone on my eyelids. And then I tend to go back over this at the, at the end of the makeup as well, if needs be. So that's a powder. So now we're going to go in and look at my brows. I tend to do this, I, you know, I'm a creature of habit. I tend to do things in the same order. I don't know about you, because then I remember. Um, so we're going in with our three-in-one brush. This is fab. It's got a little spoolie on the end. So I just tend to comb my eyebrows up. All about lift. As you get older, you want to lift up your area of your face. You don't want to bring anything down, anything drooping, whether it's your eyes or your eyebrows. So you just push up those hairs so you know what area you're working with and i think the thing that tends to happen again is, is you just get a bit more sparse on your eyebrows so you can see here there's not as much definition here but you don't want to go over heavy here because then it looks really too dark and then it tails out um let me just get the other part of the brush is you can take off the lid here and you've got this here with a little brow brush or def, you know detail brush for eye makeup so i'm going to go in with my eye powder brow boss like this and then what I tend to do is I tend to start in the middle. I'll try and do it in here so you can see. And then you just basically brushing the powder into the shape of your natural eyebrow. But you don't go too long and you don't start to droop down here. So the main thing that you start to fill in, if you start here, and then you can just fill in gent gentle strokes using the tip of the brush. And it's got to look natural. I don't like that look personally, you know, each to their own, but I don't like that look where it's like a big block of an eyebrow so i just tend to make it just new but better you know that's what that's the whole makeup but sometimes you want to look glamorous sometimes you want to look anything like you and you want to just shock people and you have different colors and you do different things but sometimes you just want to look new but better so what i tend to try and do is do a very quick everyday look i've got my brows done there so now they are framing up your face so now we're going to go in with a bit of an eyeshadow look so i tend to do this next so this is the palette that i mentioned they look like this with the Tropic logo on. So you can pick, you've got a lovely mirror here, obviously you can do your makeup on the go, and you can pick the selection of colours. So you have to have a large one at the bottom, which could be something like a blush, um, a powder, a contour, a bronze, whatever it might be. And then you've got eyeshadows, you've got, um, what else can you have in there? Oh, you can have highlights, you can have like two as well. You've got other ones here that you can have different shapes in. So you've got the, the medium size block. So you pick your combination, your palette combination, and then you fill it in. So here I've got brow at the top, which you can use this makeup all over. So you could use that as a definition on your on your lashes. Um, and then I've got lots of different eyeshadow shades here. I'm gonna go back to that three in one brush and I'm going to use the actual little makeup brush. So I'm gonna go in with what I tend to use here. I think this is cashew. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong on screen, but I believe that's cashew. So I can do this obviously directly in this mirror here, which I'll try and do actually, because it might be an easier look for you. Um, and I tend to just look down, don't try and hold your eyelid, eyelid, eyelid. Um, just look down and 
over my whole eyelid. You tend to go with a medium, medium colour over your whole eyelid. You don't want too much bright, especially as you get older, because all it does is it accentuate this any potential hood you have or any extra skin. So we're going to just but this as a very light everyday look, go over my whole eyelid, gent gentle motions, and come up to the into the crease and above the crease, just very, very slightly. And we'll build on that colour in a moment, but this is a very light everyday look. And then we'll do the same with the other eye. You know, I love doing detailed looks. I love wearing different colours. Um, I love, especially because of my brown eyes, I love mauves, I love blues, I love greens. Lots of, uh, every day I try and wear different makeup colours. But I thought what I'd share with you today is just like an everyday, great look for any colour eye. These these um, eyeshadows are great. Um, so light, highly pigmented, so smooth to put on, absolutely fab. So I've gone a little bit into the crease, but it's very, very paint. It's very, very, it's like a blank canvas, very, very neutral. So now we're going to add in a splash of colour as well. And I love colours. Like I say, it makes your pupils pop and it makes your whites of your eyes look better. So, you know, really look about colour combinations. And I can do more videos about colour um, and the colour wheel and all those sorts of things. So let me know if you're interested in that because I'm, I'm, I love makeup. Absolutely love it. So we're going to go in our second shade now. This is my, probably my favourite. As you can see, I need a new one. I think this is Sheer Nut. That's its name. And I tend to do that in this. This is our second brush here. So again, all details will be below. This is a great brush. So I'm going to try and do it on this one. So let me just move my camera a little bit so you can see. There we go. So because I have got, a, as you can see, I've got a hood, slight hood here. As you get older, you get a bit more skin here. Lovely. You don't want to over accentuate that. If I put my eyeshadow straight into my socket area here, I would close my eyes, it would disappear. What we want to happen is to have that, just that hint of colour. So it's actually going above and beyond. And when you first put it on, you're like, this looks crazy. But when you blend and sort it out, it all fixes itself. So don't be scared. Trust the process. So we're going to look here. You look directly in the mirror. So rather than doing this and then you look up and it looks completely different, you need to look straight and then you're basically going to go above your pupil. I'm trying to show this to you as well. Is that better? Let's have a look. So above your pupil and then you're going to, and it's just here that you want to start. So I tend to just go above and you don't, you know, it's a transitional colour. It's, um, it's a crease colour. I don't want to be so bold in comparison to the, the everyday colour I put on my lid. So I just tend to pat it just gently here, make sure the pigment's getting into the right place. And then I tend to just do a little bit down, take a bit more off the brush here. And then I'm going to just pat a little bit here. So it's more like a, a seven. So I'm gonna go across the top, above the crease, and then I close my lid a little bit so I can just then go into that skin down the crease and then tap that into place there. So yeah, it looks a little bit crazy at the minute, but bear with. So what we're gonna do is tap it off again, and we're gonna go with the other eye, and we're trying we're gonna try and match as much as possible, but again, it's it's very difficult. And I find, I always tend to do a certain eye, this eye first and that eye, and I tend to do things in a certain aura, like I say, creature of habit. Um, but yeah, it's so strange that you just do, let me just tap, tap, tap above here. I'm looking straight ahead. So from the middle of your iris outwards, but not too far out because so it starts to droop and drag. And, and like with makeup, you want it to be that light and shade. So you tap, tap here. And then we're going to start, we'll do, you know, circular motions and windscreen wiper motions to blend in a moment. But we're just going to go down to that L shape here. So I'm doing, well, it's actually a backwards seven on this eye. Backwards seven. And then what I would tend to do is I will look directly at myself say, is it the same? And it's always, always less on this eye. I don't know what I do. So I have to go back in. I think it's just because you have, you know, your eyes are different shapes your eye, and it's also just how you move across your body. I think it's just how you apply it. So, so we've got two. So now what we're going to do, we're not going to use this brush. We're going to go in with a blending brush and it's got a lovely fluffy head. So we're going to go around here and we're going to do little look down slightly and we're going to do little circular motions, bringing it inwards, not outwards. You don't want any powder down here. 
So we're going to circular circular motions, a little bit of windscreen wiper back and the little circles on the eye there as well. But leaving a gap between that colour and your eyebrow and we can put a bit of light. You don't want to lighten too much up under there because it, again, because you've got extra skin, you just, anything that you put a lighter shadow on brings it forward. And then obviously the darker shadow makes it recede. So we want to blend to make it look natural, just like a hint of color. And we're gonna go and do the other eye. Circular motions. Great to have a go-to look that you go, I could do that on my eye shirt, boom, 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 I'm out the door. But it's also nice then to try new colours. I think we do get a little bit stuck in a rut sometimes. We can do. Um, so it's nice to mix it up a little bit. What I am going to do before I go over with a lighter colour, I'm going to take the smaller end of this eye brush here and I'm going to go into that same sheer nut that was the darker shade. And I'm just going to go here, rather than having a harsher line with an eyeliner, I tend to go halfway across my eye underneath my eye and I just do a bit of a liner from the eyeshadow, just your medium shade, your darker shade, depending on what you've worn, how many colours you're wearing. I'm just going to be doing three colours today, but it's obviously I'm chatting away to you, that's why it's taking a bit longer. And uh, right, just that one. So we've got a bit of a mixture there, the nice eyes, we've got that, we need to brighten it up slightly. So I'm going to go in with that smaller brush and I'm going to go in with this one, which I think is oatmeal, which is my highlight colour. So I tend to go in, I'm going to look in this mirror again. Um, I go in at the front of the eyelid, the inner corner. Just tap, tap, tap. The lighter sort of shimmery eyeshadows tend to dissipate quite quickly. So you don't want to overbrush, you want to sort of pack in. I tend to go a little bit just like that, sweep underneath my eyelid. And that's probably it for the lighter eyeshadow. And just make that inner corner, even go on your actual inner corner there and just make that a bit lighter and do the same on this eye what i'm going to quickly do is just go over that blending brush very very lightly and just flick it and just try and blend it in a little bit but not overly blend so as i was saying earlier what i tend to do is because of my um, brown eyes what i've recently done is started to mix in a bit of color move this back again i'm getting a bit of a funny angle there you go I'm going to go in with that Ocean Dusk. I think it's Ocean Dusk. It's our lovely blue eyeliner, silk gel eyeliner. So good. I tend to use this on the more waterline because I don't really like a massive, big, thick line as such because, again, I've got limited eye space. Um, so I tend to go for my waterline with this. So with this, you do a lovely soft crayon, not pencil. Um, get a softer, softer crayon um, and you can just... Once you've done it once, it's a weird feeling and you think, oh, I'm going to poke myself in the eye and it's going to be awful. But you just basically go in your underneath there on your inner waterline. So it gives you the full of a fullness on your eyelashes. So when you put your mascara on, it makes it look thicker. But then you haven't had to lose any of your real estate of your eyelid or lose any of your colour. So I'm just going to do the other eye as well. But it's one of those things, once you've done it once, you get used to it and you're not poking yourself in the eye and you're not blinking and you can feel when you've done it. So it's very, very subtle, but it makes the brown of my eyes really pop. Where's the lid gone? Here we go. And uh, makes it really pop because I've got brown, you know, looking at that colour wheel, I've got brown and blue, brown and blue. Perfect. So now, apart from my mascara, so I'm going to go in with my eyelash curler. This is a refer one. Absolutely fab. So just putting it over the eyelids, eyelashes, sorry, and then hold it for five to ten seconds. But I think my, uh, if I was a desert island and I had to like have a handful of makeup products or what could I take, mascara would be my number one. I don't think since I've been a teenager that I've never, I mean sometimes you have makeup days, free days, um, but I've always worn mascara. It is my must have because I think it makes your eyes look better, you know, everyone's everyone's looks better with mascara on. It just, if there's no other makeup on your face, nothing else you can do, you fancy doing, definitely that makes you feel a bit more human. So I've curled my eyelashes there and I'm going in with the Tropic Black Mascara. Tend to go in with the lower lashes first, just very, very gently. 
actually I'm going to hold this mirror again this made it a lot easier for me to see close up rather than looking up there so um, I'm going to just very gently I tend to start now doing my lower lashes first purely because then I'm not in a minute having to look down and then getting any mascara from here on my lid on my eyeshadow so with this this is a very very gentle brush go down to the roots give it a wiggle go through it's all very natural as all tropics products are there's no chemicals no nasties absolutely fab so now you know that you know you've got that great skincare routine you've now gone over the top with makeup that is not going to damage your skin in any way or have any chemicals going into your skin now we're going to go in with a bit of just a little bit of the foundation powder so you can use the beauty boost which is the cream one or you can just go in with a mineral foundation um, I've got a beautiful kabuki brush. You just all the powders kept in here. You give it a bit of a swirl, a tap off, and then you can just go round in circular motions very, very quickly. So if you want to speed up what you were doing before even more, you can just go very, very quickly around and use this as your main makeup. It is very, very light. Again, SPF it amazes me they can get SPF in everywhere. It's fabulous. Down your neck a little bit, over your ears, making sure it all blends. But it is light uh, mineral um, part particles, that's the word, that are light reflective um, and blurring. So very, very light. Absolutely fab. What we're going to go in now with then is a quick, I'm not sure, bronzer or contour today. I think because we're doing a bit, let's do let's do a bit of contour, let's do it. So this is sepia, so our, our powder contour. So I'm just going to brush out. Here we go. Bit of a tap. Now with this, um, again with the contour, I'm of an age now where if I have this too low, everything looks dragging. It's all about lifting. It's all about making you uh, look sculpted but not over sculpted. Natural is what we're going for. So what I tend to do is find my cheekbone here. So you've got that finger there. And rather than then doing where this line is, I'm going to sort of basically go almost on my cheekbone. And I tend to just do a little bit of a tap here. Just a little bit of a tap. And it's like a, like I do with the bronzer, it's very much like a, a C there. And we're gonna blend this out in a minute. Now I've got my sort of line as such, my starting point, I then tend to build up. These powders are so light, there's not a massive stripe because it's not a cream. It is a lovely blendable consistency. So we're going to start there. And it should just very look very, very natural. Any excess on the brush, I tend to just go on my jawline like this. And we'll blend that out again in a moment. And we'll go back the other side. So with this one, again, holding it underneath my cheek there. And you try and sort of match as much as possible. And I don't I tend to sort of start from the outer corner of my eye. I don't want to come in too close. And then just a little bit on your forehead. Great way of making your forehead slightly smaller if you have got a larger forehead. Just, you know, contour around the edge as well. Just a little bit there. Excess down the chin here. Try and carve out a face, you know. So as you can see, it's quite high. It's here. It's very, very subtle. It's not in your face. I'm not an in-your-face contoury person. And then I'm going to go in a bit of a buffing brush just to blend that area. Down there, and it should just look just slightly more carved, just slightly more defined, a bit of warmth to the face as well. Um, my alternative to that would be to go in with bronzer, which is great because you can then it, it's it's brightening as well. So you could put a bit of bronzer on top of this as well, but not, I'm not going to do that today. I want to go straight in with my blush. So what we're looking to do is to lift. Everything's about lifting and refining. So. We don't want to be putting it on here. It's far too low and it starts to then bleed. Don't do that thing of smiling because as soon as you then don't smile, it drops and it's down here. Your blush is down here near your mouth somewhere. Might as well be your lipstick. So we're going to go in with here like an L shape. And where you feel that little bit of bone in this middle bit of the corner here, so just above the contour that you did or the bronze that you did, it's here, right in that bone there. So I'm doing my L. I'm finding my bone. And what I tend to do is I turn my brush this way. And I'm just going to do 
dot, dot, dot. I mean, you can see how pigmented that is. Just, I did three little dots there. So I'm going to do a little bit more, do it on the other side. Have to swap hands. So we've got that here. So I found that bit of bone. I'm going to go in. And again, look how pigmented it is. It's crazy. I'm now going to go in with a bit of a brush, a bit of tissue, because I want to just wipe off any excess because I don't really want any more than I have already have. Because it, it is, it's gorgeous. But it's, it's brilliant, these, these powders, because they are, that's going to last me forever because it's so pigmented. And then I'm going to go in and just slightly, you want to lift, you don't want to, and it's all like a dabbing motion and it's a swirl and it's lifting up to your inner, not past your inner ear, above, just basically in line with your eyebrow so that you want to do that C shape again, but it's making sure it's blended. It's all about the blend. Tap off any excess. Depending on what pigment you're using, you may want to go a bit more heavy handed. You might want to build it up. I mean, best thing to do with makeup is to put a little bit on and then go for more afterwards because it is so much easier to add more than take away. You just go in with a bigger brush, like a facial brush, and just make sure I'm blending the two together because they should sit on top of each other but without appearing to sit on top of each other. They should just be different um, tones and textures and colours in your face because I think when you put your foundation on you start with that blank canvas and then you add your colour. I, I liken makeup to colouring in. So you know what colours do you feel like today? What outfits are you wearing? What time of year is it? What do you feel like? Is it cream? Have you done your eyes bolder? Do you do a, a more natural lip? So you can just colour in and I've always loved colouring in. Loves arts and crafts. And if you actually want, if you feel that you've gone a bit too heavy handed with any blusher, just go back over with your powder and you can just blend that in again. But I think that's okay. It's very, very light. I can get a little bit heavy handed with my blush. I might put a little bit more just on here. But you can never have too much blush, can you? She says, I love, I love blush. So go over the moonlight. It's very pigmented again. It's gorgeous, this shade. And with highlight again, you are just highlighting where it would naturally shine and glow, where you, where you actually want to highlight, sounds obvious. Um, so it could be under here slightly, it could be obviously down your nose, on your actual bridge of your nose, bridge of your nose and on the bottom of your nose, on your um, cupid's bow, just the top of your cheeks around this area here, just highlight it, you just tap like that. And I'm just going to, because you hold it at the end, so it's very, very light touch. And it's just a very, very light feel. And I tend to do like, again, a little bit of a, a V and I tend to go a little bit over the edge there like this tap again over that part there and it's one of those things you look at your face and you go did I put any of that on and then you just catch it in the right light and it looks lovely so again it's subtle you want to be subtle um, a little bit down your nose as well if you want to contour if you have a, a larger nose or a nose that you want to contour in some certain ways or make it more straight or whatever it might be Obviously, you can go in with a stylus here, or you can go in with some of your contour. Um, I'm just going up and down my nose, just to brighten the whole middle of your face. And then I go over my lip, and then on the middle of my chin. So this whole area is like a tunnel of light, and then basically gets warmer and glowier as you go out. As well, give that a little bit with my finger. So the last thing to do is put a bit of a lip colour on here. So I've gone quite neutral on the eye. So you could go and get away with a brighter colour, which I might do today. I've got my lip pencil here, which is in. I can't remember what the colour is. See, glasses. It's not good. Strut, which I love the name. So again, you don't want to go right to the edge. I'm going to be trying to do it in a mirror here so you can see what I'm doing. You can. It just makes your everything last a lot longer. So I'm just doing a cross over my cupid's bow, a cross like that. I like doing an X and then very gently but not to the edge because I don't want to start dragging my mouth down so you start out here you don't want to go right to the edge so I haven't gone right to the corner because when I Stop it, we'll go, everything starts to droop. So you could go over your whole lips with a pencil to make it last a bit longer. 
you can even stick just with the pencil colour and put a bit of a, um, a clear lip gloss on top if you want a very subtle look. I think I'm going to go over with a bit of colour. So that's my pencil. This gives a bit of definition, especially if you actually get any feathering or any puckering at all. It's great to do that. You can obviously blot it with a bit of paper. I'm going to go in with a lip gloss today. So I'm not going to be blotting, but if you have did a, a lipstick, then definitely I'll be blotting. So what colour shall I go in with today? I think I'm going to go in with my Rose Blossom. This is probably my ultimate everyday flavour. Colour. Shade of lip gloss from Tropic. I'm trying to hold it now and do my lips. Really lovely. Smells great. It doesn't, with their lip glosses, it, they don't go tacky, sticky, crumbly. Um, they last quite a long time. They're not sort of staying ones. They do have ones that are a permanent type ones that just stay as, you know, you can drink loads of things and eat loads of things, but this isn't one of those. That's the lip stain. This is the lip glaze. But this colour, I think, suits a lot of people. Um, it's a great shade. And that's my look. So I've done my lip glaze as well. What I might do is, again, a minute, I'm going to probably spritz it, I think, with a bit of morning mist just to try and set it a little bit and then get that hydration on top of my skin. Underneath on my skin, I did also, part of my morning routine was to put some Rainforest Dew in there. So it's hydration all under my skin. I've got my SPF, got that protection in there. But I hope you enjoyed that one. It's very, very few products. It will take you about not even 10 minutes to do, but I've been chatting away as I do. Um, but if you have any questions about any of this look, you know, please message me, comment me here in the video below um, or pop along to my web shop. You can build your own palette. You can see it in front of you and you can choose those shades. I'll be back again another time with more makeup looks. Like I say, every day I wear different colours. Um, I love mixing up the shades. I love mixing up the looks. Um, I love new, trying new products and I'm addicted to buying makeup. I absolutely love buying makeup and how it makes me feel. So thank you so much for watching along. Have a fantastic day and catch up soon. See you in the next video. Bye.